Rodney Nigel Mayfield. Straight butter dating and relationship talk. Now that's straight butter. Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you today. Today's show topic is warning signs of narcissistic users. How they spot their red flags. Let's do it. Welcome back to my channel, Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Today, I'm diving into the world of narcissistic users. It's super important to recognize the red flags, especially if you want to maintain healthy relationships in your life. So let's get into it. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone who watches this video to subscribe to this channel if you've not already done so, and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. Again, the show topic is warning signs of narcissistic users, how to spot their red flags. All right. Have you ever felt completely drained after an interaction with someone? You know, that nagging feeling that something just wasn't right? Well, you're not alone. It turns out that narcissistic behavior is more common than we think, and recognizing it can save you a lot of emotional turmoil. An estimated 1% to 2% of the United States population has narcissistic personality disorder, according to a 2022 study conducted by Weinberg and Running Stam. In addition to grandiosity, narcissistic personality disorder has a significant vulnerability aspect and Individuals may alternate between the two. This is an Edel Child study conducted in 2022 also. So that means, folks, between three to six million people have narcissistic personality disorders in the United States. The study says the U.S. and the United Kingdom has the highest record levels of narcissistic personality disorder. Well, this is not a surprise to me, folks. Not at all. All right, we got a special guest in the house on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Introduce yourself to my audience and tell them where you're from. Hi, everyone. My name is Tamika Barnett, and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. All right, all right. Let's welcome Tamika Barnett to the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Welcome to the show. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 you. welcome. What's up, Tamika? How's everything going? Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. It's a blessing to be alive, isn't it? Amen. All right. Doesn't mean everything is going our way, but hey, we just have to make the best uh, of it as we can, correct? That's it. All That's right. It. All right. Well, Tamika, i like to thank you for coming on the Straight Butter Dating Relationship Talk Show, and i like to thank you in advance for sharing your thoughts and views on today's topic that we're about to discuss. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's chop it up. Tamika, what are your initial thoughts about the show topic title, White Size Narcissistic Users, How to Spot Their Red Frags? I think it's a good topic. I think everybody needs to be aware. Um, it is a term that's not widely known. Uh, it's becoming popular. However, we just we need to know what, what it truly is. And by shining that light, we can truly protect ourselves. Okay. Okay. Now, Tamika, are you single or married? I am single. All right, guys. Tamika is single. I mean, godly men who are not narcissists. Thank you. She's single. Because you know, do, we're doing this show based on narcissists because Tamika suggested it as one of the topics. And so I decided to uh, develop a show around this topic. And it is a serious topic. And, and you ladies and gentlemen, especially women, you need to be mindful of the things that we're going to say in this show. Now, Tamika, have you ever dated or been married to a narcissist? Um, I wouldn't married, no. 
um, dated. I wouldn't say dated. I had um, a brief encounter. Okay. With the narcissist. Okay. Now, what was your experiences, uh, and and what were the signs uh, that the man you dated? Uh, what did he exhibit to show that he was a narcissist? Um, self and overly um, exaggerating himself, um, okay. his abilities, um, um, his personality, ego. Uh, okay. He was uh, his ego was super, super, super sized. Okay, as I like to call it. Super size me, like McDonald's. Yes. Like yes. That. Okay. So uh, before dating uh, the narcissist. Did you even know what a narcissist was? Um, I knew, but I didn't know all of the signs. Okay. All of the personality traits. Okay. Okay. And, and I don't think most people know uh, all of the characteristics, the signs and personality traits. They just know something wrong with that person. Yes. You know, and, and I know, a, I know a person that everybody in this country knows that's the biggest narcissist I've ever seen in my life. And I'll just say, Donald John Trump is the biggest narcissist I've ever uh, seen in my life. And his characteristics, if you look at the things he say, the things he does, he never does anything wrong. Everybody's already wrong. Everybody point a finger at him. Those are some traits, ladies and gentlemen, that when you meet people like that, you need yeah. to avoid yeah. life a twig. Regardless yeah. of how lonely you get, yeah. it's not worth it. Yes. So, uh, Tamika, how many narcissists have you dated in your life? And do you know people, uh, girlfriends or guy friends who have dated narcissists and they have expressed those uh, uh, feelings that they have against that person to you? Um, as far as myself, as far as dating um, narcissists, um, I can't put a, a true number on it because I kind of limit myself when it comes to dating people. Okay. Um, I don't really, you know, I have to really, really, truly know you to date you. Okay, good, good. Well, now, uh, how do you, someone, spot the red flags of a narcissist? How can you determine who this person is if you have never heard that term and you have never searched out the characteristics of what a narcissist is? So how do someone spot the red flags of a narcissist? So a couple of the red flags says um, this person um, is superficial. Uh, they can do no wrong. They have a warped sense of reality. Okay. Um, they gaslight and gaslight is pretty much saying, hey, you're insane. What you're saying about me is wrong. Well. Yeah. Um, and I'm always right. Okay. So uh, this may be a redundant question of now, what are some key traits of a narcissist man? Uh, and can you expound uh, a little further, uh, a few more traits uh, that guys that you have encountered who are narcissists after you uh, find out uh, what the term was, uh, what are some key traits uh, of a narcissist? Um, they have to have people around them 24 seven. Um, and by them having people around them all the time, it, it elevates their low self-esteem. Um, most narcissistic men um, have low self-esteem. Uh, whether you see it or not, there's something there and they, they it's there. They yeah. have the underlying low self-esteem. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you uh, on that aspect. Uh, people who have to always have uh, compliments, yeah. uh, have to always be in control, uh, they have a sense of uh, insecurities, even though they may initially exhibit that they're confident and they're uh, a take charge type of guy. They can still have those characteristics, but that insecurity is going to come out at some point in time in the relationship. So uh, how does a relationship with a narcissistic man typically affect the partner? Please explain. Um, that person um, normally exhibits stress. Um, low self-esteem, okay. uh, kind of similar to the battered woman syndrome. Yeah. Um, it's abuse. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what you're going to see. Um, it's hard for that partner to get away from that narcissist. Do you think, uh, uh, did you, when you 
date this guy who was a narcissist, was he abusive physically? No. Because they definitely are abusive mentally. Mental. Yes. Okay. But it doesn't mean that a narcissist can't be absolutely abusive physically. True. I, mean, I like to say this, uh, men, as a man, as a man of God and as a man, period, whether I was a man of God or not, uh, to be abusive to a woman physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, you should never do that. If you can't uh, cope with the relationship, uh, things that's going on in the relationship is better to walk away. Now, if you're married, it's better to go get counseling. Uh, if you are a married man and woman and you guys are having problems, don't put your hands on it. Because I know there are men who are Christians who still put their hands on their wives. And the Bible says that God said that he would not even hear your prayer that's right. when you're doing it to your wife. And if the wife was doing it to her husband, God is not going to listen to you. So the thing is, your prayer, you're praying in vain. You know, until you first, as a Christian man or woman, others repent to God and open up the line of communication uh, with God. You don't lose relationship, but you lose fellowship. That communication process is cut off. So uh, to make a count, a narcissistic man change, in your opinion? In my opinion, no. 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 Wow. That's very strong. And I'm going to say that now. I disagree with that because if God can change a sinner who's bound for hell, who acknowledge that he or she is lost, God can change a narcissistic man or woman who acknowledge that I got a problem and I need key. Yeah, I, and I need help. So, but that's the first sign of anybody receiving help is to acknowledge. But I do believe, just like most people are going to hell. Now, I say that because the Bible mentions that. Uh, broad and wide is the way of destruction, and many will find it straight and narrow is the way to heaven, and very few will find it. That's uh, That means that most people are going to hell. The Bible said, hell is an enlarging herself. It didn't say that heaven was an, an enlarging itself, but hell. Why would hell enlarge itself? Because it's preparing for like many people to come. Okay? So, but anyway, if 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 Jesus can change the person who's willing to submit their will to him and Jesus change them, then he can definitely heal a narcissist. But the thing is, uh, I've never dated uh, a narcissistic woman because I've always had a keen sense of uh, how people act. Yes. If they act in a way that is not pleasing to me, I don't care how fine she is, right. doesn't matter how much money she makes, uh, I'm going to distance myself from that woman because I know me. I'm an alpha male, but I'm not an alpha male that dominates women. I let the woman, hey, you do your thing, I do my thing, we come together and we make it work together. Yes. But I'll never let a woman dominate me. Never. So that's the type of alpha guy I am. I, I'm fair. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a helper in whatever task that she wants, whatever a profession she's trying to do and accomplish, but I will not let a woman boss me. Ever. I will cut her loose instantaneously, regardless. She can do like Halle Berry, uh, lover. She's gone. Uh, so you say that a narcissistic man can't change. I believe that he can or she can, but they have to first acknowledge they that's, need that's the, yeah. uh, help and then seek counseling. And if it's a Christian man uh, or woman, they need to seek godly counsel, uh, not just counsel from any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Correct. All right. How can a woman? or anyone protect themselves when dealing with a narcissist? Uh, my my first thing would be to set boundaries. Okay. Uh, a narcissist is going to cross or attempt to cross that, that boundary line. You need to set boundaries. And when I say set boundaries, don't give them access to you. When they call, hey, I'm busy. You know, you don't have to pick up that phone right away. Yeah. You don't have to pick up the phone right all. The yeah, thing see? is, when, when, in relations, listen, I, I say this as a 57 year old man who feels 37. I've, I've been women in every race. Uh, and when I say that, I'm not lying. I've been in the military, I've been all around the world, been to five different continents, 20 plus different countries. The thing is, if you see behavior from someone that's not kosher to your morals, that's it right away. Yes. You don't have to 
uh, continue to egg things on. See, the problem that a lot of women uh, uh, experience is that they think that men are going to change. Man, they ain't going to get better. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially some Christian women where I'm just going to be patient with him and, and they to God a change. And God can't, God can't change nobody until that person first did. Say, God, I want to be changed. Yeah, that person don't want to be changed. God, I said, if I will to use right. God can't even change them. That's right. God can't do anything to fail, but the thing is, you have to be a willing yes. vessel for God to use. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you do you find the majority of uh, narcissistic men find pleasure in risky sexual behavior with multiple partners? And if so, why? I do. I do. Um, I believe that they do that because they have to add to their supply. <laughs> um. Hypnotic is only built. That's it. Okay. And, and and when they do that, hey, guess what it does? It's going to continue to elevate and inflate their ego. Yeah. So that's why they do that. Okay. So so does he have to be a narcissist in order to do that? I know men who are not narcissists. I know guys who are genuinely nice guys. I, I mean, I mean genuinely nice guys, but they're horse men. Yes. I mean, I, I know some. So they're not narcissists, and uh, and they treat women well. As far as doing things, but these guys are horse men. Mm -hmm. I've I've been around thousands of men. Those I know. And that's why when I try to give women advice, listen. Why why I give women advice? You either gonna listen or you're not. But if I see you one day, you may say you're right, or you may say, well, you may not say anything because you don't want me to uh, know that I'm right. Why would I know I'm right? Because, because like I said, these experiences are not new. Right. It's just new people that ha that these things happen to. Correct. You know, if if you have a teenage daughter. And I warn my teeth in order. Listen, don't date a guy who stayed eight thousand miles away. It's not gonna work. But Dad, he might be. He, he might be different. He may be a small percentage that he may be different. But ninety-five percent of the time, he's not. He's twenty-three years old. If he wants to put his hands on a woman, do you think he's gonna wait till you fly to Sweden uh, every six months? No, ma'am. It's not gonna happen. So, thing is, I try not to be right. I told her, well, when you need to talk to me, you come talk to me. You see what I'm saying? I will uh, keep on. Because the thing is, you know, when parents tell kids stuff, they, the kids think parents are trying to hate on them. Yeah. I said, I said, well, I, I ain't going to say no more. When you need to talk to me, come talk to me. Well, she called me and said, well, Dad, uh, I'm not sad, uh, but but we ain't dating no more. I said, well, I said, uh, well, tell me, talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. I give it time to hear. Right. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so, oh, yeah, uh, I, I have experience. You know, I've, I've been that road before. Um, now, you know, most people don't know what a narcissist is, as, as I mentioned earlier, until they date someone and experience a negative trauma that comes with dating a narcissist. Yes. But once they date the narcissist and they find out these characteristics, uh, there's no way that a woman or a man should get back in that situation with a person who's a narcissist because of the experiences they had. That's why uh, with with the last person. True. But you will find some people that seem like the negative always draws into the same type of man. I, I've seen so, so many women like that. I said, I said, it's not him alone. It's you. You are helping him. Yes. Yes. Because a man, a streetwise man, who's been in the streets with a lot of silly women and Bobby mentioned now some women being silly yeah. and it's not talking about all women right uh who does the same thing go to the same type of guy a guy could beat you a high and you know I don't want to be in a relationship with being you can finally leave you know, you find somebody else you tell him this other guy what happened you in a last relationship this other guy don't mean you no good he's gonna use those same tactics to control you like the other guy yeah so you're gonna have to uh, be your homework, be your diligence. Yes. Uh, if you have to get uh, pay twenty nine dollars or nineteen dollars a month to investigate people, uh, ask the person, what's your name? What's your full name? You know, right? You you don't have to be serious. Hey, let me see your ID. Uh, you look at his name and investigate this guy. Make sure that he is not coming from another state. Just got out of jail. Uh, a felon or had killed somebody and got out of jail and served in two or three years. You know, some some states you can kill somebody and do two or three years and be out. He may have relocated to another city so that he can do the same thing to a woman that don't know his history in the other state. That's right. 
So, ladies, you guys don't have to come with it now because y'all keep naive. I mean, I see y'all. I was like, man, this the dating pool is terrible for women. It is terrible. It's awful. Yeah. I mean, I see guys. I was like, man, who we? Yes. Who? Now, Mika. Yes. Uh, I got nine signs and characteristics of a narcissist that I I, I I compiled this list. Now, this this list is not exhaustive, but. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these characteristics uh, that are in my list. All right. Number one, narcissists never want to admit that anything is their fault. True. True. All right. She agree. All right. Number two, narcissists don't take responsibility for their behavior. Oh, absolutely true. All right. She, ag she agrees with that. Okay. Number three, uh, they will make you feel like your thoughts and feelings don't matter. True. True. All right. That's three for three. Number four, a narcissist tell you that you are always exaggerating because they do everything right and you're never pleased. Yes. Gaslighting. Gaslighting. All right. We can go back to that term. Gaslighting. Now, most people don't know what gaslighting is. So, go look it up. You look up everything else on Google. So, <laughs> go look that up. I, I mean, Google is one of my best friends because there's some things that I want to go quickly. Yeah. I'll speak in my phone, it come up and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, number five, they say things like, after all I've done for you, and this is how you even pay me? Oh, absolutely. That's it. Oh, yeah. I, I never told anybody that, but I have thought that. And, and I didn't think that because I'm a narcissist, because I'm not a narcissist. I'm a I'm a, 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 a approachable guy. I'm a big guy, but when I cut you off, I'm going to cut you off, but... When you are a nice person and you see people trying to use you, I'm going to burn that bridge. I don't have a problem burning the bridge. But then it's just like the person you do a lot for, but then the moment you tell them no, then they try to flip the script on you, right? Yeah. Uh, but you said no. Well, did you, did, did, do you remember all the things I've done for you in the past? Right. Okay. It's called reciprocation. That's true. You know, you I can't keep pouring into you and you ain't pouring into me. Right. And you think that I'm going to leave. Wow, I'm going to be ghost. Yes. All right, number six. Uh, narcissists can be very manipulative and act nice, especially when they are trying to gain an advantage. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why would a person give you their worst behavior, exhibit their worst behavior when they're trying to get something from you? That's right. That'd, that'd be dumb. Absolutely. Now, I, I can say this. And this is not going to live in the show, but Donald Trump, he exhibits the worst behavior and trying to get people to laugh on. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's so dumb to me. I, I just can't imagine how a person can think because he's a narcissist. That's how narcissists think. Textbook. Textbook. All right. Uh, number seven, they say things like, you just don't understand me. You're the problem, not me. Yeah. Yeah. You're the problem, not me. There's nothing wrong with me. Right. All right, number eight. You're nothing without me. Has, has a guy ever told you that? No. No. Have you ever heard girls tell you that guys guys had told them that? Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I've, I've known guys to say that, especially women who have a low self-esteem, a serious uh, serious low self-esteem, guys, yes. when when she's complaining, well, well that's how somebody else. You're nothing without me. Nobody else gonna want you. Nobody gonna lie one with three or four kids. Yes. yes. So let so go on out. Yeah, she's thinking like, I guess you got a point. Who wants right. who wants a woman with four kids? Well, I know most guys probably wouldn't date women with four kids. Most guys wouldn't. Uh, I mean, uh, but there are some guys who would. Because I know a a, a young lady, Christian woman, dad's a bastard, uh, forty years, married the mother who had three kids when he married her. And they they stayed married like fifty years. Yeah. So some guys do. It all it all depends on the man. It all depends on the woman. But women, you don't have to lower your values no. just to get a man because your horn ain't because you're low night. Right. Because me and a horn ain't long with you. So the thing is, if they meet up with you, hey, it's like it's gonna be a combustion because you guys are getting together and you ain't saved, you ain't living right. Well, you could be saved and you fall short. So let me take that back. You could be saved, but. That's not the relationship that God wants you to have. No. You know, because anybody can lay down and have sex. And with all this, uh, these new HIV infection rates uh, in uh, major urban cities, uh, Miami, number one, 
with the highest amount of new in, uh, HIV infection rate, Memphis, number two. Memphis, I think, is the 18th largest city yes. population-wise, uh, but it's the largest black Correct. city in the United States. Number two Correct. of new HIV infection rates, and most of those people are black people. Correct. Which means that they're having sex with any and everybody. It's sort of like the multi-level bodily thing. You go out and have sex with three people, get them HIV. Oh, three people go out and have sex with three other people, get them HIV. Yeah. And now they say it's almost 8,000 people, long cases of HIV. Do you think that's all? The cases in nothing? No, I guarantee you it's 20, 30, 40,000 people in nothing. Because, why do I say 20, 30,000 people? Because most of those people, 90, Plus percent of old people, high 90s, are not going to sit down and say, you know what, I'm going to give my life to Christ. I'm not going to have sex anymore. Uh, most of those people say, I'm going to give it to as many people yeah. as I can because somebody gave it to me. Cool. That's the mindset of human beings. That's the mindset of a sinful mentality. Not to sit out, but to go out and, and, and spread the wealth. I know two women they said they had friend girls that had HIV and they were still having sex with men. Correct. If I knew a person like that, even somebody in my own family, I would turn them into the law. That's me. Yes. Because that person that your friend having sex with, you could meet him down the road because you never met him before and they could be the one to have sex with you and give you AIDS. You know, I wear condoms. Condoms break sometimes. Correct. Okay, D, you work. I just wish I, I just hope I don't get it. Come on. But anyway, let me get back on top. All right. Now, uh, uh, again, uh, <laughs> please. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Yo, uh, uh, go back to number nine. You always think that everything is about you. I didn't, I didn't say number nine, but number nine is you always think that everything is about you. Uh, would that be of a narcissist? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, that statement in itself is a reverse psychology response uh, from a narcissist who is always yeah. insecure about something. Yeah. You know, about something. Yes. And again, you know, uh, that list that I uh, compiled is, is not exhaustive, but it, it gives you a general idea of what a narcissist is. Uh, a narcissist is all about himself yeah. and all about first self and no, one's, uh, no one else. It's like me, myself, and I. Correct. All right. Now, uh, uh, again, you know, uh, but one thing I do know about uh, narcissists is that they do have a lack of self-esteem. As uh, we mentioned, lack of self-esteem is insecurity. And, and therefore, they, they require constant admiration and yeah. validation from others. Yes. Uh, they don't know what empathy is. Correct. And uh, this makes them have difficulty understanding others. I see that in Donald J. Trump, uh, the former president of the United States. He cares about nobody. Veterans. Uh, he don't care about anybody. You know, it's all about him. Yes. Uh, these type of people want to receive ultimate attention. Like you said, they want to be around you know, 24 hours. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that some narcissists don't want to be around you all the time, but there are some that they do. They have to be in control. Yeah. You know, and all they know where you are. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, they believe they are entitled to special treatment. Donald Trump. Yes. I don't know any kind of narcissist so that's why I'm constantly mentioning Donald J. Trump uh, and they give nothing in return but a headache and perhaps have real pressure uh, so I, I give this warning buyer and dater beware oh absolutely there's somebody better out there uh, than a narcissist and the, and the quickest way to stall a narcissist is not dating him or her the quickest way to get Donald Trump out of office is not going to be it <laughs> I'm just throwing that in oh, oh. Uh, and this is not the middle of the show, but I will have shows uh, based on politics because this show not only talks about dating and relationship topics, but I talk about topics uh, that going on in the United States and the world that I feel like my audience will uh, would like to hear. And so uh, I have I, I don't I'm not politically correct, folks. I'm just not. I don't uh, go and go along and be along. I don't. I'm gonna speak facts and truth. Uh, based on the word of God, whether you like it or not. All right, Tamika. Yes. Did you experience any of these characteristics relating to the narcissist uh, when you dated anyone? Those nine characteristics that we uh, just went over. I, 
I heard you mention a, a couple of them, but I did. Did you experience any more that was on the list? I did. You did. Yes. Okay. Well, how long were you involved in a relationship before it ended? And who ended it? You or him? Um, it was probably I would say a year and a half, two years. Okay. Why you stay so long? Well, it wasn't um, a relationship per se. Um, it was just encounters, not every day, not often, just encounters, brief encounters. You know, uh, we would be in the same place at the same particular time, uh, business ideas, business meetings, things like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, do you still talk to the guy now? I do not. Great. That's some great, great advice. Now, do you feel comfortable at this stage in your life to be able to recognize the warning signs and the characteristics of a narcissist and avoid that type of relationship in the future? Absolutely. Okay, that's that's great. It, when you learn from your past mistakes, especially when they were harmful and uh, physically or mentally or emotionally, uh, when you learn from that, that's a plus. Yes. Now, Tamika, are there any golden nuggets uh, or advice that you would like to share with my audience, especially the females, to give them more insight on what to avoid when dating uh, and the things to look out for when deciding to date a man that may have narcissistic characteristics? Um, I would say uh, use your spirit of discernment. Um, watch. Um, you don't have to just because everybody have a we all have a one off day, a bad day. Yeah. Um, narcissists, they have persistent behavior. Yeah. If you notice that consistent behavior, uh, there no empathy there, nothing. They don't care anything about how your day was. <laughs> uh, that's a sign. Yeah. Um, they everything is about them. You know, never about you. Uh, that's another red flag. Yeah. Uh, so these are the things to look out for. Uh, they're they're just big red flags. Yes, big red flags. Um, they they have to be the center of attention. Um, red flag. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, I, I don't know how many men deal with women narcissists. I, I believe there are probably more men narcissists than women, but yeah. there are women narcissists. I'm quite certain. Uh, I've just never won across them, and uh, I would kick them to the curve if I even thought that they had. Uh, a one percent of uh, the narcissistic behavior. So, yes. Um, well, Tamika, I'd like to thank you for coming on the Straight Butter Dating Relationship Talk Show and sharing your thoughts and views and opinions on today's topic. I hope to have you back on another topic in the new, near future. Thank you. Let's give Tamika Burnett a round of applause and thank her for coming on the Straight Butter Dating Relationship Talk Show. Thank you again for coming. Thank you. God bless. Hey, Crowley, folks. To some extent, everyone exhibits narcissistic characteristics. A normal amount encourages healthy people to be proud of their successes. However, when narcissism becomes excessive and is used to control others, it becomes dangerous. Never form a relationship with this type of person, regardless of how lonely you get. Thank you for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Channel for more relationship insight and advice based on biblical scriptures and reasonable, sensible, and practical counsel. God bless you. Now that's straight butter.